Hello, my YouTube world, Johnny Moe. Stick with me today. We are going to change the hydraulic fluid in the Ferris F210Z with the 5400 hydro gear pumps. Stay tuned. All right, my YouTube world, let's go over what we're gonna need. Uh, right off the rip for the F210Z, you're gonna need a 716 inch wrench. This will take the bleeder bolt off. This will allow air to get in here. Usually you could use a socket, but I'm going to show you here in a minute. There, there's a problem with trying to get a socket down in there. On the Ferris units with the springs, it's a little bit more open. But on the F210Z, looks like I'm going to have to use a 716 open end wrench. Um, you are going to need this. This helps me take the filter out. Um, it lets me grab the end of it and pull it. That's the end that I'm pulling right there. That end, as I put this on there and I, I pull it out with that, you're going to need a one and one eighth inch socket. I like to use the swivel mount. It helps me to maneuver my way in there. Um, you're going to need some 20W50. This is synthetic oil. You do not have to use synthetic oil, although I use synthetic oil because of the heat. The heat is an issue in there. I believe that um, I believe the synthetic oil is better and... Uh, it is a lot more expensive though, and, and, and that's one of the problems I'm having with the Ferris or the Hydro Gear. The Hydro Gears just take so much oil, whereas my old Toro took two quarts of Hyper, hyper Oil Synthetic. This takes five quarts on each side. This is a lengthy process. Uh, I would schedule an afternoon or a morning. I would not, I would not try to think you're going to get through this in 45 minutes. It's definitely not going to happen. Uh, it takes time to get this to even, even to put five quarts of oil in there, it takes time. Uh, you need two Hydro Gear filters. This is what they look like. The part number for these are 510-1987X2. That's for the Hydro Gear's filters. You'll need two of those because you have each size is a unitized pump. So, having said that, so on these ones, in order to put the oil in here, if you just put the oil in there without loosening the bleeder caps, uh, the vent caps that they have down there, what happens is the oil will just stay here. It won't leak through. You have to loosen these caps. So there is, let's see if I can see them here. There is right past here. Where are we at here? Why are I not seeing you? There they are, right there. See it? Right there. Let me see if I can get some more light on that. There is that bolt right there, but look what's above it. Look what's above it. It's the cross member bar that holds the holds the engine and all the all the frame and everything. So the only thing you can really get in there is a 716 inch wrench. So this is gonna be a pain in the butt uh, to get out. So that's not gonna be fun. But that's how you're going to have to get it done. So another pain in the butt, not well thought out um, on the Ferris. The Briggs and Stratton group did not think this out very good. That is a terrible, that should be able to be a socket extension with a, and I should be able to get in and get out of there. Nope, I can't do it. It's even worse over here. I can't show you because it's dark. It's even worse over here because over here, you have this little uh, tray here that you'd have to take off, take two bolts off, and then try to get down there. Just a pain in the butt. Just a pain in the butt. But we're going to do that, and we're going to try to do it without, without taking the tires off. Let's see if we can do it. You're also going to need some an oil thing. So I will get right back to you. Let's get this started, and we'll move on from here. All right, guys, so here we are. We're underneath the mower. As you can see, look at the, look how I had to get up in there and, and get that put on that cap. So you have this piece, this piece bar right here that's actually in the way. So I had to come in from under here and actually get in between this little linkage here and get on the back side of it. And uh, actually when I pull that out, I might have to pull the uh, the pumps the sticks forward to move this in and out to get that out of the way. But let me see if I can do this. All right, so I'm gonna have to get off the phone here. Make sure that, 
Uh oh. So as you can see, this is this is a little bit of a hard process here. So let me get off the phone. Let me get this untightened, and um, I, I will get right back to you. But I just wanted to show you how that swivel does help to uh, help you with that. All right, guys, I got that undone. Uh, I don't know if I got it good enough, but I'm going to try to get in there. And yeah, I got it. So uh, I can't do this with both hands here. I got one on the camera and, and one in there, but I got it loosened up. As you can see, the gap's there. Now I'm just going to twist that off. And then the oil is going to leak out into this little pan right here. Um, I can see there's a lot of dirt here. So before I actually do that, I'm going to tighten that back up. And it looks like I think I want to do a little bit better job of cleaning. It's kind of muddy under here. And I really don't want any mud getting in there while I'm trying to get things in and out. So uh, let, me, uh, let me knock off some of this loose stuff here. But I wanted to show you how using this gun with the um, swivel made it possible because trying to get in there um, with a socket set is very difficult and oops, oops starting to leak out a little bit so let me get this started and I will I will get right back to you all right my YouTube world this is Johnny Mo so we got it out wasn't that big of a deal uh, it does help having these to be able to come in from a different angle and to be able to pull that out this is the filter it it it's at 100 hours on the machine, and it says that the first one should be changed at 100 hours. So it does look a little uh, banged up. Um, we are going to remove that gasket, and we're going to put the new gasket on. And uh, we're going to go from there. We're going to put it back in, same exact way we put it out, and then we're going to do the other side. So <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to film everything here. I would really like to. It's just I, I don't have... Um, the tools I need for the cameras and the phones and to be able to be set up um, at this time to be able to get underneath there and show you. I hope that the, the little bit of information I did give you is, is helpful uh, to get these. Again, this is, this is a cost thing because you're putting five quarts of oil in there and you got to do it every single year or every 400 hours, whichever comes first. So remember that when you're looking to buy a mower, Remember, what is the maintenance cost of the unit itself? The 5,400 pumps are really, really nice, but they come with a very heavy maintenance price. At least once a year or every 400 hours, you have to change out that oil. That's a pretty big expense, especially if you're using synthetic. Again, you don't have to use synthetic, but I just choose to because of the heat, the humidity, and since I'm a solo operator, I'm using pretty much this mower exclusively, and it, it's really hot on them. I used to take the temperatures of the hydros last year uh, just to see how hot, and they, they were hot because you figure this thing is moving all the time. So this is part of the maintenance package. So guys, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to get back to you as soon as I get this cleaned up. All right, guys, so here we are on the other side. We are letting it leak out. And so we have just about everything done here. This side is done. I'm gonna wipe it off to see if it's still leaking. It is tightened down. I used this gun, made it very easy. I did not have to take the tires off, which saves, us, saves me a step uh, in the long run. Less I have to do here. Um, have any questions about this? This is a processed and it's still leaking out. I'm going to put the this cap I'm going to wash this cap off and I'm going to take that, remove, remove that rubber piece right there. And no matter how much I try, just it still spills oil here and there. I, I, just taking stuff out, it's just a pain in the butt. But guys, I'll be right back with you. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this cap back on, get that rubber out of there, put that filter back in there. And as you can see, that filter goes right inside there. I don't know if you can see it or not. That filter just pushes right inside there. And uh, then you put this cap back on, but what I'm concerned about is I, I should have washed it off a little better. There's still some dirt and stuff. Um, this could be an issue down the road. I should have just went and washed it all out, uh, sprayed under it before I started this. I didn't realize how muddy it was under here. I should have known. But at the same time, hopefully I'm going to wash this all down. I'm going to clean this cap. I'm going to clean up around there real good, and hopefully nothing gets in there. It looks pretty clean as, as of right now. So, guys, that's my time. 
I will be back with you here in, while I'm starting to fill it up. All right, guys, so we're at this process right here. Um, to be honest with you, I couldn't really get those vent caps to um, loosen up here. Uh, it was very, a little bit difficult, so I tried to just open them up and um, just dump the oil in to see if it'll take it. Uh, this one here appears to be going down a little bit. It's slowing down. This is the long process. Even with the caps out, it's still a long process. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to really work on it because it's not moving anymore. Let's see if this one moves. You'll see it because it'll like do a little hiccup if it's if it's going down. It'll come all the way up. and uh, It does not. Yep, there it is. That's what it looks like when it's going down. Um, so I'm going to try to get those loosened up a little bit more. It doesn't look like they're moving anymore. So this is the process here. That's one quart of oil in each of them, and it takes a while just for them to get get down into there. This one isn't moving anymore, so apparently I'm gonna have to try to get that out of there. It is it is a pain in the butt. No, this one's not moving anymore. So this is the problem with this, and uh, it kind of stinks. But uh, this is the kind. Of, and you guys wonder why I buy different pieces of equipment. Um, sometimes it's just as little as this because this is a pain in the butt. If you take it in, uh, I, I believe it's almost, it's either two thirty or $300 to have these done. And I could see why, because it just takes so freaking long to do. All right, guys, let me get back here. Let me try to get those loosened up because it looks like it's not draining down anymore. So I'm going to have to open up those vents that somehow. All right, guys, here we are. We're still pumping it in. Um, I was able to get that vent out but i was not able to get that vent out so as you can see i am on four quarts on the right side three quarts on the left side um what's nice is that at least it's still going down it's just taking a very long time to leak down in there uh this is just a process this is not oh you know you better have some music and better have some other things to do because this is just a process um, so what's going to happen here is once I get on my fifth quart, I'm going to look down in there and I think it, you can see it. Let me see. Here. You can see that little drain hole right there that doesn't have the plug in it. And what will happen is a little bit will come out of that. you got to pay attention to that. As soon as it does, you, you plug it back up and then you fill it up to the cold mark and then you just wait and then you kick it over and you do what you need to do and... We'll see if there's any air in the lines and stuff like that. But basically, this is just a process, man. This is just a process. Very long process. Um, not real thrilled with this process, especially since I have to sit here and watch this go drip by drip by drip. Uh, there's just no easy way to get that bolt out. That bolt is... That bolt is over there underneath that fan cap. I can see it from here. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. Um, it, it just and, and it's surrounded by the top frame. There's just no easy way to get it. Uh, I thought about maybe taking that fan cover off. I don't know if I could get it off. I never really tried. Um, I thought about taking the fan cover off. Maybe just taking the fan off and then getting at that bolt that way. But it's just so tight. I'd probably need to take this off, take the fan cover off, and then try to get at it with a wrench that way. But for right now, it's going down. I only have to do it once a year. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a new mower, just to be straight honest with you. I like to maintain my mowers. I enjoy it. I'm out here on a Sunday afternoon, just enjoying myself in, in my garage, just uh, working on my mower. Boy, is it muddy. It's just been a muddy mess. It's rained all day today. It, um, just rained since, I think, about 8 o'clock last night. It hasn't stopped since. I can only imagine what it'll be like by tomorrow. But hey guys, that's that's the order of being a lawn care guy and working on your own mowers later.